Hi, I'm Andre Huey and welcome to this edition of the SKN Newsline Newscast on Channel 95. As St. Kitts prepares to welcome its first cruise ship in over a year, the St. Kitts Tourism Authority has issued protocols that must be followed in order to keep the industry safe. More in this report. Finally, after more than a year, St. Kitts will be receiving its first cruise ship, marking a resumption of the cruise shipping industry. The Seabourn Odyssey will dock at South Friars Bay off the coast of Carambola Beach Club on Thursday morning, marking the first ship to come since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. But it comes with a lot of restrictions. No one will be allowed access to the premises to have any contact with visitors or even to get a glimpse at the ship. Strict protocols will be applied. In a notice from the St. Kitts Tourism Authority earlier this week, the public is told that access to Carambola will be restricted or limited to mitigate any risk or interaction with international cruise visitors. Visitors will only explore the destination by fully vaccinated, travel-approved bubble tours. Local tourism employees interacting with cruise ship passengers, including but not limited to ship agents, port staff, taxi and tour operators, are required to be fully vaccinated. Passengers and crew are not permitted to interact with the general population. Tour operators are only allowed to transport cruise passengers from the dispatching site directly to the attraction and after the tour, directly back to the ship. The following attraction sites or tours will not be accessible to the general public during the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the cruise ship day. Brimstone Hill Fortress and National Park, Carambola Beach Club, Carbel Batique, and the St. Kitts Scenic Railway. A plaque exchange ceremony, initially planned for Thursday morning after the ship arrived, has been cancelled. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister urges patience on the part of stakeholders, especially the stores at Port Zante, as unlike under normal circumstances, they will not benefit directly from the arrival of this ship due to the travel bubble that will exist. Another ship is coming later this month, the Celebrity Summit, which will dock at Port Zante. But again, a travel bubble will restrict access to the stores at Port Zante depriving the store owners and vendors an opportunity to earn. Tourism Minister Lindsay Grant cautioned that the return of cruise tourism to St. Kitts and Nevis is going to be slow. Well, we had a, uh, meetings with the merchants last week. They're very understanding also. We indicated to them that they have to give us a, a, a test period of about three, four ships. After that, we go back to the drawing board and to see how we can cordon off, um, make Port Zante a bit more secure in a, in a bubble too so that they too can partake in some of the economic activity that's being driven by the arrival of the cruise ships. We are hoping that we, we, we are seeing light now at the end of, of the tunnel and, and that we can bring back the in industry to some state of normalcy and at the level that it was prior to COVID. Some pundits like Siobhan Richards in a previous interview with SK Newsline suggests looking away from cruise and to more sustainable forms of tourism. I'm not convinced that cruise tourism is coming back on the level that they think. So there, it's like they're saying we're holding them hostage and stuff, but the cruise tourism is going to come back more in a trickle form before it comes back to what it was. What you're going to do between there, you've already invested all this money, yes? You've already lost money for a year. So, you know, a lot of people are going back into it with this hope that it's just going to be how it was. It's not going to be that way. You're not going to be making the profits you were making before. How are you going to deal with that? This comes down to a personal decision even in your business. So we have to now figure out ways to make up for that loss. The nation waits to see how this cruise bubble will work and how soon cruise tourism will return to a semblance of normalcy. I'm Andre Huey, reporting for SKN Newsline. PAHO Director calls on Latin America and Caribbean countries to invest in health sectors in the COVID-19 pandemic. SK Newsline's Glenn Bart reports. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a severe impact on the social and economic life of countries of the Latin America and the Caribbean region and has exposed the need for great investment in health, said Dr. Carissa Etienne, director of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO. In a recent virtual press conference, Dr. Etienne said issues of inequality and poverty play a significant role in the human suffering and I call on countries of the region to strengthen their social Latin safety America nets. Last week paints a grim outlook for our region. 
more than 7 million companies have closed in Latin America and the Caribbean in the wake of the pandemic. More than a third of people in our region are living in poverty and one in four worry about where they will get their next meal. Unemployment rates are higher here than any other developing region. The report shows how the pandemic continues to be fueled by inequality. And unfortunately, our region is the most unequal in the world. We urge countries to continue prioritizing health and social safety nets as part of their COVID response and as they turn their sights to COVID recovery. Social protection is key, both to help people adhere to the public health measures that we know work and to rebuild more inclusive, equitable societies. According to the PAHO director, the region has only invested in health for too long and the pandemic should be the incentive for significant investment in the health sector. Across our region, we're paying the price of chronic underinvestment in health. So now is the time for countries to break the cycle by applying a public expenditure in health of at least 6% of GDP to health systems and to chart their path to recovery. But now also is the time for countries to renew their commitment to Pan-Americanism and solidarity. As we've said many times before, health is a fundamental right. It was so before COVID and the unequal burden of this pandemic has painted the urgency of health equity under new light. Dr. Etienne said PAHO will continue to help in vaccine sourcing for the region to assist in their vaccination programs against COVID-19 and lamented that some countries of the region are still below 5% vaccination of their populations. Glenn Bart reporting for SKN Newsline. When we come back, an update on the COVID-19 situation in Her Majesty's prison. Elliot's Funeral Parlor is the first licensed embalmer in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We have a friendly and professional staff. At Elliot's Funeral Parlor, we offer a wide range of packages from $6,500 Homegoing service at chapel, locally made caskets, tailoring of outfit for deceased of your choice, wake overnight with slideshow, funeral death announcement, obituary, booklets, family pinons, memorial books, preparation of funeral arrangements, wreath, fresh and artificial. For further information, call 469-3298-664-2007 or 660-0186. Elliot's Funeral Parlor in Gingerland, Nevis. Dedicated to those we serve. When you need electronics or appliances, find just what you want quickly in one location. Yes, everything's on the one roof. Only at Smart Electronics. We have tons of name brands, amazing service, and easy layaway plans. Summer is just around the corner, and we will save you the hassle of walking around town or going to St. Martin. We have everything you need right here in St. Kitts. So don't get confused and go different places. We are located at Port Zonte, opposite the food court. Visit us today, or if you have any questions, you can call 466-4271 Smart Electronics Way to live a smart life Terms and conditions apply Where will we go? When the quarantine thing done and everybody touch An open interactive event can be described as Tremendous Effective On power with any conference around the world from exhibitions to trade shows, corporate events to product launches, from press events to political functions. We are the secret sauce behind events that make you go, wow. We've staged multiple world-class events in the Caribbean and developed the skill to deliver quality in every detail, whether the event is live or fully virtual, or maybe even somewhere in between. At Open Interactive, we got your events covered. Get your free quotation today at www.madebyopen.com.
Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto Plus Car Wash, where the service is number one. Welcome back. The management of Her Majesty's Prison is reporting some recoveries of COVID-19 cases among inmates and staff. SK Newsline's Jacinthia Teixeira reports. As of July 20th, 2021, 55 residents at Her Majesty's Prison and six members of staff have fully recovered from the COVID-19 virus. That is according to a press release from Her Majesty's Prison. The release said the recovered patients were given an all-clear by health officials after two negative tests recently. Currently, there is one resident and 11 members of staff who are still considered active cases. They are all in a stable condition at this time, and the members of staff who are still positive remain in isolation, the release added. Personnel and residents at the prison farm in Nevis were tested twice after being exposed to a member of staff with the virus, and both tests were negative. Following an outbreak in the prison in St. Kitts in June, the management team put several measures in place to protect the health of residents and staff members who were not affected. The measures proved effective in drastically slowing the spread of the virus. Commissioner of Corrections Terence James and his team divided the cell block down the middle with a partition and put affected residents in isolation on one side. To facilitate full recovery, those who tested positive are given additional supplements, encouraged to exercise, and are also taken outside for fresh air and sunlight. They are visited regularly by the prison doctor. Cells were sanitized to allow for recovered patients to move out of the isolation area. Where necessary, staff members are equipped with protective personal equipment, PPE, which was acquired with the assistance of the Ministry of Health. The release noted that Commissioner James continues to work closely with the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws, and the Chairman of the National COVID-19 Task Force, Abdiya Samuel, to monitor the situation at HMP and to address any issues that might arise. Personnel and residents are still being encouraged to get vaccinated. To date, just over 70% of staff and approximately 50% of residents have been vaccinated. I am Justin Tishira, reporting for SKN Newsline. Food truck operators in the Independence Square area will be given a designated spot on North Independence Square Street to operate their business. More in this report. Food truck vendors who normally function from Independence Square will, will soon operate their businesses in a designated area along the North Independence Square Street in Bastyr. Government announced Tuesday that it is expediting its preparations for an area along North Independence Square Street that will temporarily house a number of food truck vendors that once operated on the streets of Bastyr. Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris led a small delegation on a tour of the designated area on Tuesday. The team was updated on the progress of the work being carried out there to date by the Urban Development Officer Mr. Ron Boddy. On Wednesday, Mr. Austin Farrier, Chair of the Inter-Ministerial Committee on Street Vending, gave an update on this development as a guest on the government program Working For You. It was an idea posed um, a few years ago by the Urban Development Unit who did a lot of work with the guys, the entrepreneurs that are operating mobile vending units. Um, it's an area at North Independence Square Street. It can hold all the mobile vending units on the street right now, which is around five to eight, and it will have the necessary amenities for them to, to be comfortable while stationary. These mobile units have the flexibility of moving around, but when they're stationary, um, I think it creates an atmosphere sometimes of convenience for their patrons. And so that is where 
the same is going to be um, trying to emulate and the enhancements that are going to be put into the area, like bathrooms and um, wa um, hand washing facilities, is going to speak to having an area that is healthy for during COVID protocols, basically. Once completed, it is expected that the area will house a minimum of six large food trucks around the perimeter of the lot with seating accommodations in the center. According to a release from the government, this follows a decision to halt all street vending activity in the city center. It is anticipated that all preparatory work at the North Independence Square Street location will be completed within a matter of days, paving the way for food truck vendors to commence operations there by the end of this month. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Prominent educator recalls the early days of education in the colonial era on St. Kitts. Glenn Bart reports. A former educator and administrator, Mr. William Doe, recalled during a recent interview with SK Newsline the challenges and triumphs in the colonial era of education on St. Kitts with what was called a seventh standard education available to the masses as being the highest most could achieve, along came the concept of the grammar school that would prepare students for further education. But in those early days, the grammar school accommodated only 80 students out of its capacity of 200. Access for the masses was practically non-existent. Mr. Doe recalls the real purpose for establishing the grammar school. A very sensible governor of the Leeward Islands, I think he did. He was Sir Benjamin Pine in around 1870, was responsible for underpinning the, the grammar school in St. Kitts. And there were two aims of the grammar school. One was to provide executives for the businesses in Bastia and the sugar estates, mainly plantation managers and so on. And the other was to provide people for the elite professions, medicine, law and divinity at the universities in Europe, mainly Oxford and Cambridge. And that's what the school set for. And when the first inspector of schools came to St. Kitts, his job was to set up this grammar school, but in his spare time, managed the 36 primary schools in St. Kitts, Nevis and Anguilla. That showed you the value that was placed on the lower echelons of the education in the country. William Doe was to play an important role in transforming the education system and very often going beyond the call of duty to help his fellow citizens. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. When we come back, Haiti has a new prime minister. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. It's the new and improved SK Newsline Android mobile app. With the SK Newsline app, you can watch your news reports, the SK Newsline newscast, sports, special features, and so much more. You can also send us a WhatsApp or call us directly. Go in the Google Play Store, search SK Newsline, and download the app today. The SK Newsline mobile app. News on the go.
Welcome back. We turn our attentions now to regional news. Haiti has a new prime minister after two weeks of uncertainty following the assassination of its president. The death of Jovenel Moise led to a power struggle. Now, following international pressure, Ariel Henry has emerged as the troubled nation's new leader. The 71-year-old neurosurgeon and former cabinet minister says he plans to meet representatives of various sectors of society in the coming days to build a political consensus to address the problems facing Haiti. Al Jazeera's Andy Gallagher reports. The formal swearing-in of Ariel Henry as Haiti's new prime minister is an attempt to end days of uncertainty following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. Acting Prime Minister Claude Joseph appeared to be in charge following the brazen attack on Moïse. He stepped aside to allow Henri to take the reins. The 71-year-old neurosurgeon is calling for unity, but he's facing a long list of social and political issues. We will create a secure, reliable and stable environment to facilitate political activities throughout the country. We will expect massive participation in the next presidential elections, the highest participation of citizens of voting age. Henri has appointed his cabinet with the goal of leading Haiti to new elections. That's been problematic previously, leading to Moïse ruling by decree. But Haiti's future may depend on a free and fair vote. This government won't think for the people. They're unpopular. They're only thinking for the elite again, at the expense of the Haitian people. We can't expect anything serious from this government. We say to this new government, welcome, because we the Haitian people, we want actions from them. We would like the new government to solve the crisis of the country, to solve the problems of slum neighborhoods. Many Haitians see these as dangerous times, and Henri's international backing is regarded by some as a problem. Anybody they sort of back or anoint or push is going to be seen with a lot of skepticism by the Haitian people, I think. Uh, people are are very wary of uh, international community uh, involvement in Haiti at this time. But, of course, they want aid, but they, they don't want the interference and uh, a meddling. Memorial services for 53-year-old Jovenel Moïse are being held, even as the investigation into his assassination continues. On Tuesday, Haitian authorities made more arrests, including people said to be police officers. But they appear no closer to finding out why he was killed. The cowardly assassination of the President of the Republic constitutes a real national drama. We have a duty to consider it as such, including those in hiding and in any counter-conflict. While the international community is pushing this impoverished nation to hold elections, others say voting won't solve Haiti's problems. Many key institutions have failed, gangs control large parts of Port-au-Prince, and the economy lays in ruins. The stakes for Haiti couldn't be higher. Andy Galaka, Al Jazeera. As the St. Lucia elections draw nigh, DBS TV sought to get the views of members of the public on the manifestos of both the St. Lucia Labour Party and the United Workers' Party. Hi, I'm Alex Busque, and you're watching Street Vibes. Both the SLP and the UWP have launched their manifestos. What draws your interest in these manifestos? Well, I haven't thoroughly investigated or seen the SLP manifesto. You understand? But pertaining to what they're saying, basically it would be the same thing on the manifesto. You understand? But I am very much impressed with the United Workers Manifesto, meaning the healthcare for all, help for the needy, you understand? No books will be needed, basically you just pay your $300 yearly or whatever and then you get it. So I'm very much impressed with the PWP manifesto so far. Well, the Labour Party manifesto, I have an interest in, in the, you know, in what they're planning to, to do for St. Lucia. I'm interested in that one. But you see the flabble, uh, 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 uh. I'm not in that one. Because to me, this, this is the same thing over and over when it comes to UWP. Nothing has changed yet. And it will not change once it's UWP that the thugs. My brother, not because I'm a flabo, I'll say that. When I look at the manifesto that Labour have, it makes no sense. That thing from since years before. And they're trying to copy. When I look at the manifesto Flabo has here now, the 545 five makes a lot of sense. It will make sense and it will get us there. I have seen uh, manifestos from both parties already. And honestly, not because I'm a, a strong supporter of the St. Lucian Labour Party, 
when you watch the manifesto, you need to, you need to um, judge them. The, the, the issues that is affecting us, and so, for example, uh, the youth, uh, what is there for the youth, and so forth. And you can see within this present uh, manifesto with the St. Lucia Liberal Party, it has touched a lot concerning the youth with um, the talents and all and something, right? And then when you watch on the other side of this, this present government, what have they done with, with the, the youth? Crime has risen, and the majority of people who are involved in crime are the young people. And once you have rejected the young people, you have destroyed the nation. And also for the elderly, this government has done absolutely nothing for the elderly. And even this present SLP, who would be the next government to, to deal with the issues of this country, they have included the elderly and stuff, and the disabled. One well, of my keenest interests are agriculture. Food is life, and our economy to take a step up. We have to consume what we grew. So, but the first step, I want the education of the people, the children at schools and the homes. It don't make no sense increasing agriculture, tons of dashing, tons of Yemen children only want fast foods. So I wanted to go the first is for education of our public. Let's support what we grow. We help our vendors and then the young people can go back in agriculture. It can be a viable um, form of employment. So I want the first on agriculture. That's my keenest interest, Dada. Well, there you have it. You've just been watching Street Vibes with me, Alex Buske down here at the Aquarius Crossing, the intersection of Coral and St. Louis Street. With that, we'll take you back to our studio. Internationally, France has rolled out a new COVID-19 health pass amid a surge in infections, which has prompted warnings the country is in the grip of a fourth wave of the pandemic. From Wednesday, people wanted to visit cinemas, museums, sports matches, and other cultural venues, will be required to show proof of vaccination against COVID-19, a negative test or a recent recovery from the virus. Al Jazeera's Natasha Butler reports. Lingering on a terrace is one of life's pleasures for many people in France, but soon only those with a COVID pass showing that they are fully vaccinated or have a negative PCR test will be able to enjoy the experience. Staff will have to check customers' passes, something this restaurant owner says is unfair. We consider that this is not our job to check your ID and your COVID pass. We understand that this is certainly something necessary, but we are not policemen. The pass, which is now mandatory in cinemas, theatres and museums, will be extended to large shopping centres and some transport. The French government hopes it will reduce health risks and encourage people to get vaccinated. Be in no doubt, our goal as always is to take measures that are proportional to the health situation, to guarantee public freedoms while assuring the sanitary security of our citizens. The French President Emmanuel Macron announced the new Covid pass rules last week and since then they there has been a surge in the number of people booking vaccination appointments. Within days, nearly four million people had signed up for their first jab. I don't think we should have two opposite groups, the vaccinated and the non-vaccinated. I think it's up to each person to do what they want to do. The past made us to act now as we had planned waiting until August to get vaccinated. The pass is dividing opinion. These protesters in Paris on Sunday said the government's trying to force people to get vaccinated by eroding their rights. People should be given the freedom to choose whether or not they want to be vaccinated so it's more democratic. Some scientists say that France is in a fourth wave, fueled by the highly contagious Delta COVID variant. The government says that the pass will be necessary for as long as the virus is a threat. Although some regard it as anti-democratic, opinion polls suggest that two-thirds of people in France support it as a way of hopefully avoiding another lockdown. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Paris. The Milwaukee Bucks are the 2021 NBA champions after defeating the Phoenix Suns on Tuesday in Game 6 of the NBA Finals. The Finals MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo opens up about his family, how far he's come and where he's headed next.
in this ABC News report. The Milwaukee Bucks are celebrating this morning after taking home their first NBA championship in 50 years. Giannis Antetokounmpo put up 50 points in game six to cap off his MVP performance. ABC's Will Reeve caught up with the so-called Greek freak after the big win. Take a look. Giannis, July 16th, 2014, you yes. tweeted, I'll never leave the team and the city of Milwaukee till we build the team to a championship level team. Seven years later, did you ever waver in that belief? No, no, I, I, I kept believing. You know, I kept believing in the culture we're building here, the organization, the city of Milwaukee, and myself, that we, we can do this. And, and, and seven years later, as you say, we, we did it, you know, but, but it, took, it took so many people, so many people sacrificed in order for us to uh, accomplish what we accomplished tonight, you know, and, and without the support of the city, like we had 20,000 people cheering inside, 25,000, 30,000 people outside cheering in every single game. That was amazing. And uh, Milwaukee, this is for you, and we, we, we can't stop now. We gotta keep, keep getting better and do it again. Have you seen the images of what was going on outside during the game? No. Let me show you this, man. It's like unbelievable. I was, when I wasn't watching you, I was, I was, look at this. This is from the top of the arena. This is insane. This is more than 20,000 people. This is like 65,000 65,000 people. Milwaukee, we did it! We did it! Yeah! It was your time. This whole, this whole series, man, you were on another level. 50 points in the clinching game to end a 50-year drought. What does that feel like? Explain to a mere human what that feels like. I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about points. I was just thinking about winning this game. Like, I didn't want to go back to Phoenix. You know, it was too hot over there. I didn't want to leave my family. You know, and I wanted to get it done here in front of the city of Milwaukee, in front of our fans. And uh, I was just trying to take possession at a time. And while having that mindset, I was able to accomplish what I accomplished on the court. So, you know, like, no athlete goes on the court and say, I'm going to score 59. Like, maybe some of them, maybe like KD, KD you know. But, but... I took it possession at a time. My teammate told me to be great, and I was just trying, trying to stay aggressive. No matter if I miss a shot or make a shot, you know, kept coming all night. You growing up in Greece had to hustle. You had to grind for everything in your life. That's a long way from holding the two biggest trophies in your sport in your hand as a champion. How far along? How far away does that part of the journey feel now? It doesn't feel far at all to me. Yeah, it hasn't, like I feel, it was just like yesterday, eight years ago, you know, eight and a half years ago, I was, you know, uh, kind of, we were trying to figure out where we're going to get our next meal from, you know, like I was, I was getting, me and my brother were getting co co uh, combined paid 500 euros a month, and our, our rent was 400 uh, euros, like, like we were struggling, and, and, but like all the, all those, those struggles, man, all everything we had to went through we see my mom and my dad struggling and my and my brothers like this that made me who I am today that made me like being so stubborn like I, I wanted this so bad like I wanted to help my family come out of that struggle I was able to do that. I wanted my brothers to have a better life than what I did you know I was able to send my little brothers to private school I was I wanted my kids to have a better like I was working every freaking day and I wanted to win a championship for the city of Milwaukee and for myself also and like if you put your mind uh, if you put something in your mind and you every day you wake up that's the first thing you think about and you're like how can I achieve this goal every day that's what I've done the eight years you can achieve incredible things but you have to be extremely committed this has been the SKN Newsline and Newscast on Channel 95 if you want more on these stories you can visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com from all of us here at SK Newsline, I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for watching.